welcome to this premiere episode of Farming Today, a series that is meant to take farming conversation to a whole new level right here on TV47, the home of untold stories. The idea here is to look at critical issues that have made agriculture to be looked at as a business of hope. And we shall do this by not only looking at what the farmers are doing in the fields, but also looking at key components in the entire value chain, such as market intelligence, policies, as well as external factors, especially at such a time of unpredictable weather patterns. You can follow the conversation online using the hashtag FarmingToday at TV47 News, or you can engage me directly on Twitter at It's Eli Jamwangi. In our first episode, we focus on a rather controversial subject. I'm talking about poultry farming using battery cages. And why controversial? On one side, the farmers that are using these cages are citing increased production. On the other hand, animal welfare experts are against this kind of farming, saying it's not sustainable. And that forms the basis of our Food for Thought segment. Chicken rearing has become synonymous with poultry farming in Kenya. The 2019 census report showed that Kenya has an estimated population of 5.58 million layers. The domestic supply of eggs is inadequate, and as a result, excess demands is imported from neighboring countries, especially Uganda. This unfilled demand opens a profitable opportunity for local farmers to raise layers for profits. Furthermore, animal production and value chain analysts at FAO Kenya have termed poultry as one of the most rapidly growing livestock sectors due to the increasing affluent urban and peri-urban population. On the flip side, the high cost of animal feeds has seen many poultry farmers close shop or downsize the number of birds they keep. Proper and healthy housing in poultry guarantees close to 40% of the success rate in the industry. It is for this reason that many chicken rearing farmers are going for battery cages, where chickens are reared in identical rows and columns of cages connected for easy feeding and collection of eggs. A system that animal welfare organizations say denies the birds their right to movement and exposes them to high stress levels. Shabana is the manager of this poultry farm in Utawala, Nairobi. He shares his experience on poultry farming using battery cages. Manage ni kazi raizi. Ziki wapa juu kwa cages, ukingia pata kutoa imbolea, yote iko kusipiko, iko sawa. Si kama pale chini, zilikuanga, zilikuanga tuzo hote in ground. Iyo kazi kutoa ni ngumu. Sasa hapo najua, unaigia atu hapo na kijiko, Unatoa hapo uchavu hadi huko mwisho. Hapa si tunabebana na ndoo unamwaga. Kuna hapo hivyo pes inaenda ikia kiandanga. Sasa venye ziko hivi unaweza ukiona kuku ikiwa mgonjwa unaweza weka maji unaweza weka dawa kwa ile kama ni ile ni ile ya kwanza hii unaweza weka dawa kwa hiyo that first container. Unaweza weka hapo dawa hizi kuku zote uko sure zitapata hiyo dawa. Na na alafu unazima main tap yo maji natumika hadi isha kwa siku na, nalisha mara mbili nikijumlisha hiyo chakula pamoja yote na kuja kilo 110 na mayai nikiokota ikiwa ya chini na inanipea credit 25 nikipiga ni simu niseme mayai meja mtu anatoka huko kiamburu ada anakuja na pick mayai anapeleka maji maji wanaikanga tap moja pa box sasa hapo usas, usiangalie at hivyo tap venye iko hivyo ufikirie kuna maji sometimes you must check usipoangalia hiyo hakuna hapo hakuna unajua kwa hii cages usipoangalia hakuna venye kuku inaweza survive itoke hapo itoke hapo kwa cages irudi hapa chini hata ipate maji kama imegwama mahali kunyu ni inategemea hiyo ni pole kuna mali na fika inagua inagua maji haipiti lazima uangalie ufunue hiyo nini ukafungue uone hata uache maji itrike hapo chini kienda chini sana kabisa kama dakika tatu hivi 
juu wakati maji na guama mahali inakuwa na uchafu inakuwa na bakteria ukishapea kuku zako chakula zote kwa hiyo cages unatembea yote around ukizunguka ukitoka kwa dringa hadi kwa ingine so umesema kwa siku unaweza chukua kama 25 crates of eggs with ready market how is the pricing sai ni 400 per crate hii cages moja tulikuwa tunanunia at 6000 Keji moja inapepa kuku 128. Na hapa mahali unaweza bebe hapa kuku 1600 hapa juu. Ukishuka jini hapa kwa korofa tena ni 1600. Kitu bra 25 mezi jam party. Next one for pages. Na nails ni onomema 2 kg sunflower 2 kg. Okay. Yeah. With the cost of poultry feeds increasing by the day, many farmers are resorting to produce their own feeds in order to improve production efficiency and profitability of poultry enterprises. The business of poultry cages is booming across the country, and this is evident going by the number of poultry cages vendors you will find in farmers' exhibitions. Onyango, who is from Silver Star Agritech Company, takes us through the various types of battery cages and how they operate. You have the A-type chicken cage for automatic system. So here we have the feeding system, we have the manure collecting system, we have the egg collection system. So this is a, just a setup to show you how a A-type cage can be controlled with the automatic system. Battery cages has a lot of advantages compared to free range. One, the battery cages will help a farmer to know how many chickens are laying in a day. If at all it's a, it's a battery cage that's not uh, automated whereby you don't collect the, edge, the eggs on a consistent basis. Where you go collect the eggs by yourself, you'll know how many chickens have laid the eggs depending on the partition where the chickens are. So it helps you to know the production rate of, the, of your chickens. You'll also control uh, viruses compared to free range because you'll be able to identify if at all there's one chicken that's sick between four compared to maybe in a free range you have 500 and one is sick. It's very hard to identify the one that is sick on a free range. Then battery cages also is management because you don't have to use a lot of manpower to manage this system. You'll only need maybe one or two people who will be collecting your eggs, putting the feed, and uh, making sure that there's water in the water boxes. So for battery cages, most of the time it doesn't uh, accumulate a huge space compared to free range. Like when you're having a A-type chicken cage for four tire, that can host 128 birds. The area that it covers compared to free range the battery cage will host more birds compared to putting it on a free range. On an area of 2.1 meters length and 2.4 meters width, that can't host 128 birds on free range. But on battery cage, you will host 128 birds comfortably and easily manageable. We are in a country where we need to uh, increase the number of eggs and production. And uh, you find people having a small area of land keeping a high huge number of birds definitely will need uh, cages to do that because when you're keeping in free range you will have a you limit the number of production you are you're giving to the country so it's uh, all a, a, a matter of business in terms of business when you look at in business wise the battery cage is better off but when you're looking in terms of uh, just the freedom of the chicken in terms of, it's better off to keep it in free range But for business wives, we prefer the battery cage. So, let me understand about the, the egg collection system, I believe. Okay, the egg collection system consists with, uh, of a manure belt, uh, egg collection belt. Mm. This helps to collect the egg from the cages. The eggs are being pulled by this belt using a motor. Uh, then the eggs are usually collected to this endpoint. This is where the collector stands collecting the eggs, putting them on the trays or the bu bu bucket, yeah. So that's the simplest uh, way of uh, mm. air collection through the air type. So we have these belts connected on each tire. There's the below tire has its own belt, 
which collects the eggs to the end point. This is the collection point for the low tire, this is for the second tire, and this is for the third tire. Uh, it's advisable to the company, to its customers, yes. anyone who is going to buy this system, uh, at least to have like a 10,000 birds in one row for it to be cost uh, efficient because uh, it uses a lot of power. Yeah. So for you to uh, manage the cost for power, you need to also have a huge number of birds. So this is the standard uh, four tire unit. So this hosts 128 layers. The cost for this one starts from 35,000. That's for one unit. One unit. Uh, it includes the installation in it, but the transportation is for the customer to transport for himself. So this one unit, uh, it comes full with the water box, the nipples for on each uh, cube, and the feeder trough. Yeah. It's uh, two meters uh, long and 2.4 meters width, the area that it covers. Then it can host 128 layers in it. In each cube, we put uh, four layers. In a cage, a chicken can eat 116 uh, grams per day, compared to plastic feeders, where you, whereby you find that the chicken have a lot of wastage. You have to maybe fill again the feeder, plastic feeder. So you don't, you can't accumulate the amount that you're using on a plastic feeder compared to the cage. Researchers say poultry keeping through the battery cage method violates animal rights and that the use of large quantities of drugs during the raising is another rejection factor. On that note, we take a short break. When we return, we critically look at the animal welfare side of the story. Stay with us if you can. Dr. Victor Yamo is the Humane and Sustainable Agriculture Campaign Manager at World Animal Protection Africa Office. He is a veterinary surgeon who has spent a significant proportion of his career life working in various capacities within the Africa poultry industry. For over 25 years, he has had the privilege of working with production systems to improve the productivity of chicken, leading to improved food security and livelihoods. Over the last three years, his focus has shifted to improving the welfare of farm animals and specifically chickens. In the poultry industry, there are several things that we look at which then drive welfare. We start with the basics, and the basics are about the five fundamental freedoms around which animals are supposed to be looked after. Our freedom number one is freedom from hunger and thirst, which essentially looks at how do you feed the chicken, what do you feed it with, how frequently, realize that uh, the way we feed an adult is different from the way we feed a, uh, a, a young child. So the same applies to chicken. The feed that you give a day old chick is different from the feed that you give uh, a fully grown layer or a producing a bird for that matter. We, critical around feed is also water and that's why it's freedom from hunger and thirst because if you don't give good quality water, you then end up with a situation where the animal doesn't perform. The next critical thing is freedom from discomfort, which looks at the environment, the chicken house. Is it comfortable? Is it well ventilated? Does it, does it have enough heat or sunlight? These are critical because if the animal is in a poorly ventilated chicken house, you end up with respiratory conditions, or, which then leads to a situation where it can't produce optimally. Air is very critical for us to be able to do certain things. The third one is freedom from uh, pain, injury, and disease. And essentially, in this point, you're looking at disease control. And you realize that uh, poultry production is one of the intensive farming systems and around which globally we now know that there's a lot of pandemics coming from it because it's a place where if you don't manage disease well, then it ends up in the food. Or if the disease occurs, you have to treat. And when you treat that uh, bad, you end up with antibiotic residues or antibiotic resistance uh, cropping up at certain levels. So that's the next important thing. Then there's freedom to express natural behavior, which essentially is to say that the chicken must behave like a chicken irrespective of the production system you are on. If it's, if it's a chicken, if it's a bird, a bird is supposed to be able to scratch, to dust bathe, uh, 
uh, it's supposed to be able to patch, it's supposed to be able to flap its wings. That's the kind of freedom you're talking about. So the housing that you provide or the production system should be sensitive to that. That's why in chicken houses you put a certain amount of litter which allows the chicken to, uh, to scratch. That's why in good chicken houses you also put enrichment, which is things like patches where the bird can patch. You also allow it to have enough space so that it's able to walk around, stroll, and do exercise. All those contribute to the wellness of the bird. And last but not least is freedom from uh, fear and distress. And essentially at that level you are ensuring that the animal is not undergoing any situation that causes it to have stress because a stressed animal then underproduces. People then are also discovering that animal welfare is linked to certain things. Animal welfare is linked to food safety. If you mistreat the animal at production level, you end up with an animal that might underperform one, but it will also produce poor quality products. And above that, depending on how you treat it, if it's uh, not fed well, or fed with uh, things like maize that is rotten, like happens in some of our situations, that will end up in your product. And as an organization, we've done some research, supermarket meat testing that showed that meat at the supermarket was also ending up with uh, contaminated with microorganisms that could cause problems to the consumers. So those are some of the things that the country is beginning to look at. Big integrated companies are beginning to realize that animal welfare is also important for trade. Our position as an organization is that bird cage actually limits the bird's capacity, especially around freedom to express its natural behavior. When producers talk about bird cage system being very efficient, they're comparing bird cage system with a poor production system, and that then is valid. But when you're comparing bird cage systems with high welfare production systems, then you find that bird cage systems underperforms because the bird is not being given its optimal uh, capacity to produce. Remember earlier on I talked about freedom from stress and distress, fear and distress. If the bird is enclosed in a small space, it can't do what it's naturally supposed to do. It can't flap its wings, it can't stretch. That cage, there are three or five of them. Essentially what then happens is you end up with a very stressed animal. That stressed animal will not produce optimal. It's just like you and I, when we are sick, our production or our optimal capacity to work optimally is uh, uh, reduced. And that's the first thing that you notice. But also because of the battery cage system, that animal does not have an opportunity to stretch. That animal does not have an opportunity to, ex express, to ex exercise its legs. And essentially what you're finding out is that that animal ends up with a very weak leg. And if you talk to the people who buy old hens, they will quickly tell you that they even avoid buying birds from spent hands from battery cage systems. Leading supermarkets in the world have issued statements indicating that they will only sell eggs produced under humane conditions in a standards policy shift that is likely to lock out supplies from thousands of poultry farmers in Kenya. Is battery cage system sustainable? And why is it that the rest of the world is moving away from battery cage systems? And those are some of the things we need to ask ourselves. It's because the consumer is beginning to say that, no, we are not just going to use animals as a factory to produce eggs without caring about that animal. So if you are enclosing animals in small spaces for long durations of time and refusing to allow them to have their freedoms, then are we a great nation? And those are some of the challenging things. Beyond that, it has also been shown by research that when animals, layers specifically, are able to walk out, enjoy some of the sun, you end up with a quali better quality egg because there are things, uh, uh, there are certain nutritive values that come from that exposure to sunlight. And that is why in certain jurisdictions now, it's a requirement that animals should also have some natural sun periods of natural sunlight because there are things that come through that process. I think for us as Kenyans, the other thing that we need to look at is when big retailers are beginning to say we will not accept battery cage systems. Are we then supporting a system that is locking our producers out of high value markets? And remember, high value markets does not mean I have to export. It's that supermarket or that fast food restaurant that is sitting in Nairobi or in Mombasa or in Kampala and is demanding these standards and saying that for you to supply into this production, into this uh, retailer, 
this is our requirement. And part of the requirement is that the chicken must come from, the egg must come from a, a system that is not bacteri caged. And so I think those are the things, the discussions around it. I think we need to work with the farming community and I think I know that one of those retailers has even said that they're facing out gradually. They're not saying it's done immediately, it's a gradual face out. And from where I see it, I know globally we are saying that battery cage systems should be phased out to by 2030. Are we prepared as a country to go through that process or are we burying our heads in the sand and saying it's okay, this works for the farmer, let's work with it. I think the things that we need are to look around that. What we need to do is to re rethink, and I think I must appreciate the retailers that are saying they are not going to accept eggs. Because they are not saying it is now, they are saying we are giving you a period of time. In fact, uh, the one you've quoted, Kafur, clearly stated in their press release that they are going to work with the farmers to meet that standard. And I think it's an international standard, and the, the beauty about it is that our con we said in our constitution that anything that we've re ratified internationally becomes part of law. So essentially we are saying the battery cage issue is almost law because there are international conventions that has driven certain producers to that place where they are in. And again, it's purely based on science. I want us to accept that it's based on science. We are not saying battery cage systems are bad because people don't like them. We are also saying the scientific evidence that is showing that the bird at the end of that production cycle is worse off than if it was in deep litter production systems. We are also saying that Consumer perception is driving it, yeah? And so to answer your question, we as an organization are saying we are working with industry, the poultry industry for that matter, to develop relevant standards and to say these are the standards around cage production systems, or as you're saying, they should not be cage production system. What is the alternative? The alternative is already there. People producing, in this country, people are producing eggs in deep litter system. How then do we move our cage farmers to deep litter production system that meets certain welfare standards, especially international or regional welfare standards? Because that's the way we then ensure that we maintain our access to this high value market. Without that, we will be importing eggs from elsewhere because the market will quickly say we can't find eggs that are not coming from battery cage system, can we do it from somewhere? So I think the critical thing there is that the fact that the retailers are saying we can work together to get the farmer to the right space and to get to do the right thing. And we as an organization is willing to work with farmer and the poultry industry to ensure that we not only have relevant standards, but we are meeting the high welfare production system that we are talking about. Quite a debate of business versus welfare and it will be interesting to see how this debate unfold in the coming days. Well, that marks the end of our show. Thank you so much for watching. But remember, let's keep the conversation alive using the hashtag farming today at TV47 News or you can engage me directly at It's Elijah Mwangi. See you again next week.